was going to ask you guys this question right off the jump. And, you know, everybody feels like that I'm taking runs at Mike McCarthy for the coaching things. And But was I the only one that felt like he needed to challenge the hurt scramble on third down? No. He 100% did. Because I think the Eagles punt. Is this on the first drive? This yeah. on the first drive. Yeah. This is when it was this, a terrible spot. Yeah, when the knee, when the, the knees down at the thirty yard line, and the line to gain for the first is the thirty three, and the official marks the ball basically like at the thirty two because of the dive, but his knee was down. Right. At, if I'm a, I mean, I think it's a little bit different early in that game. If it's third and one, they're gonna. They're fourth and one. They're going to tush push it. We know that that's, but maybe on his, maybe if it's fourth and three on his own 30, maybe he doesn't go for that. Right. Yeah. Missed opportunity for Mike McCarthy. You know See, that about it. I, I just kind of feel like that it, maybe early in that game, it's like, oh, it's brought us. It's too early to be challenging. But when you get with the, when you play a team that's as, a, as aggressive as the Eagles are, that maybe you can like he can say well fourth and three is a little bit too much for us right now, you know early in the game ball in our own thirty. I, I don't know why Mike. I don't know why they've got a million people sitting upstairs wearing military hoodies, you know, for this game. Nobody's looking no, at the replay and, and saying nobody, hey, you know your your quarterback your quarterback unfortunately steps out of bounds, but you get a down situation that maybe could affect the first drive of the game and give you the ball, and you don't challenge that? Or you challenge the spot? Well, and they go right down the field and score. I think he probably thought, boy, this has to be within a yard, and they're going to tush push it. Like, looking, having the extra time like, to yeah. know it's about two and a half yards. I, it's closer yeah. to three. Yeah, it would have been about fourth and three. And, yeah. and I think at that point, in their own territory, they're probably going to punt the football. I don't. I just, I just don't think they're going for it there. I really don't. Now, I just want to know what their processes are in that. I don't know how you could have confidence you're going to stop that tush push, though. Yeah, no, I, I think it's good. That's I think exactly it's good for I four yards. Challenge it. You, know, you think it's good for four yards? It is. I, I, I don't know if they would have gone for it, to your point. But I, I would not have had confidence if I'm Mike McCarthy that fourth and three were stopping their tush push. I think they get that about 78 You still would win the challenge, and yes. then you would have found out. So it wouldn't have done you any harm necessarily right. to have even thrown the flag. You're right. They should have thrown it. Um, Mike, when it's that moment, like, what are you going to do? I think he freezes more than the average coach. Yeah, I. to me, I, I just – I had a real problem with that because I felt like that that could have been one of those – momentum you know early in the game you you get it no you, you make them have to maybe think make them think about having to put i i don't think you lose the challenge if you're worried about losing the challenge and the timeout i i, I really don't see any i don't see how that's going to happen right there um can i give you what i thought the worst officiated call the game was sure and i think there were some bad ones what was it the scoony hold the scoony hold was bad but it happens, General, every single time that when you're a point of attack blocker and you have your hands outside the framework and the ball cuts behind you, and Bayer did a great job of selling it. Yeah. That he was had a handful of jerks. Mm. Scooney had him. Scooney really did. They, actually, they could have called holding on Ferguson, too, at the same spot. I mean, that Ferguson got his block. Scooney got his block. But... That wasn't the worst call of the game. It's the Gilmore one. It's the Gilmore one. Oh, it was a yeah. terrible call. It was, it was a awful. phantom call. I mean, it's, I called it a phantom yeah. call in the post game yesterday. Yeah. It, and I know I'm bringing it up, but and the reason I say this is because it's not very often that with Gilmore, he's given up a lot of size to Brown, and he's playing with like really, really good technique, and you're always worried about them in the vertical game. You know, we saw it on the other side with Smith and you know what he was able to do, the double move, the stutter go. With Bland on the other side, you know they got the touchdown, but you worry about that Brown just, you know, running by you. And Gilmore, I thought, did a hell of a job. Great technique. He hits Brown within the five yard area, like yeah. he jams. You know, if you look at if you watch the the sideline copy, you could see where the sticks are. You could see exactly where the ball's placed. He jams him within that area. For that official to make that call, that 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 is that is, boy, that is that is rough. That's rough because what happens is Brown runs right into Gilmore again. Gilmore's just trying to Gilmore's standing his ground. 
And it was an uncatchable ball that went out of way, bounds. It's way, like even if you decided to throw the flag, once you see where the ball lands, you're going, okay, we're going to go ahead and wave this one off. Horrible call. Yeah, I just it was just it, that, that you know there were there were bad calls on both sides. I kind of felt like I I tweeted it that things seemed to kind of even out. But when calls like that are made, that especially with somebody that played with the right technique, because yeah. a lot of times these guys won't play with the right technique. That time he did. All right, the Prescott helicopter scramble play. You know the one where he's running the ball and he oh, gets and he gets oh, helicoptered sure. yeah. down. He goes the John Elway. Yeah, and <laughs> except he doesn't land in the end. It zone. It doesn't land in the end zone. It appears that Prescott wants to go throw the ball to the Cooks. And here again, we're talking about how do you get Cooks involved? I'm sure Mike's like, oh well, we're trying. Well, on this particular play, I think they were really trying to get him. Cooks is on the right side, and he's going to go right to left for you. Pollard is in the motion going outside left when he sees Prescott scrambling. So basically what you do is you've got you've got Cooks coming across going right to left, and then Pollard is outside. Now he's trying to go into the end zone. Okay, problem is he runs right into Cooks. So you mm. wonder, like, Okay, why does Dak have to scramble? Why did Dak have to take off running? Why couldn't he throw the ball to Cooks when they had him open on? He ran right into Pollard on the outside. Mm, Pollard okay. was trying to find space in the end zone and ran right into Cooks, and it took both of them out of the play. Because Pollard's sort of in scramble mode at that point. He's just yeah, trying he's to just, get open. He's just looking for a spot. And he runs and, into Cooks. And unfortunately, he runs into Cooks, or maybe Dak would have the opportunity to, to get him the ball. Yeah. So that was that was unfortunate there. It's all in the details, man. Another one, the Schoonmaker short play. And we've talked about this a bunch. There might have been a missed assignment here. There might have been a missed assignment when it came to Martin and Steele on the blitzer. Because you're always taught to let the furthest guy from the ball go, and the quarterback handles that one. I don't know, because Dak never looked right at all. But you look at the way the blitzer was coming, the free rusher, Moro, it's like Martin goes down inside and then Steele goes wide to take his guy. So now there's this lane. Usually it would be if you felt like there was going to be a blitzer there that or that you were going to get a blitz, you would have that. You'd bump that one and then pick that up and then give your quarter. Even if the quarterback's throwing the ball the other way, you want to pick up that blitz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give a free runner. You know, even though Cooks was Cooks was open on the play, because what happens is they run the double. I showed you guys they ran the double picks, mm -hmm. yeah. and and Lamb and and Cooks did a great job of executing that. They've had problems with these pick rub routes with these receivers and tight ends. That's not that hasn't been as clean with the tight ends. I can't be too disappointed in Dak. I I think he did stare down Scooney and Cooks was wide open. Yeah, but you're getting such quick pressure, Brian. No, you no. got to take the first guy open. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that I, I think that to me it was the harder of the throws. If I could, the it was. Yeah, the yeah. final, the final, the Way final, harder. the final. W was there enough contact before the reception that that should have been a pi in your mind? Oh, absolutely. There should have been. You know, absolutely they should. But that's you know these officials. I mean, you, you really can't bitch about it. I'm I'm sorry. That's that's just they they that's why they call these games. You watch these games every week on. You know, and you're like, oh, that's a bad call, or that's that's one that should yeah, have been constantly had. happening. They're constantly, okay, Every you got, game. You got yeah. three penalties and two injured Eagles, and couldn't yeah. put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, yeah. I my my final one is on the Prescott two point play. You okay over there, Chief? I'm doing all right. Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> Surviving. I'm thriving. Uh, this they're going to try and get the ball in the two point play once again to Cooks real quick, and he's going to go right to left again in the end zone. He's open, but Prescott's got no shot. And this is because of because of Biotish. Biotish, he gave up the pressure was so quick from Carter in his face. Prescott has to pull the ball down and attempt to run. And he switches his hands knowing he's gonna be it's gonna be close to get to the pylon. But he takes one extra step to launch himself at the pylon. It was a heck of an effort by Brandon Graham. I mentioned that he's the one that really kept Prescott going wide on the play and it forced him to have to take that extra step but there's going to be an opportunity to get the ball to Cooks for the two point play but Biotis got beat so badly right off the jump that Prescott I think did the best he could to try and get that ball to the corner 
Unfortunately, they didn't make it because he stepped out of bounds.